Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, our segment where we take a look at the big stories making headlines on our national newspapers. Uh, we'll be having Jada Johnson, a lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, join us in just a couple of seconds. But we'll be beginning with uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. The story here says, Ninja, Zamfara hold talks. Troops locate students, workers in forests. We've deployed more troops where abductees, kidnappers are, says CP. Bandits told students they were soldiers to provide security. <clears throat> That's according to a resident. I ran in zigzag pattern to dodge bullets, escaped students, narrates. On the top of the punch here, we see discos to pay for energy rejection, says NERC. Experts rate economy as weak, despite exits from recession. NAVDAC approves AstraZeneca for COVID-19 vaccination. Power generation drops as idle plants rise to 11. And below here on the Punch newspaper, we see a picture here of a scene of a crash involving a tourist along a road in Joss Plateau State. The bus was engulfed in flames. And here we see police operate in fear as herdsmen kill seven in Edo State. Governors pledge to compensate farmers, herders, clashes, victims. Fire shale liability to PDP says ex-National Assembly member. Walker falls from eight-story building, estate tackles Lekki Gardens. Kwara sets up panel over hijab agitation in public schools. And the last one here on the front page of the Punch newspaper says, Fanny Kaede visits Ibuho. Can versus Nigerians be permitted to carry guns? That's the top stories on the Punch newspaper this morning. Mr. Gina Johnson, uh, are you here with us now? All right. So while we wait for Gina Johnson to reconnect with us, mm -hmm. uh, let's begin with these stories on the front page of the, uh, the, the Punch newspaper this morning. I think this one is very interesting, talking about the Niger Zamfara whole talks, troops locate students and workers in forests. Mm. It's uh, really very, very interesting that uh, less than uh, 48, 72 hours after um, the abduction, uh, they have actually been uh, you know, located. It is something that uh, uh, we should give kudos to security operators. But then I'm really interested in what they said about yeah. um, Niger Zamfara holding talks. I think uh, it's time if... Uh, each state cannot really uh, get uh, their situ security situation sorted by itself. If they need to go get into some sort of collaboration mm -hmm. to uh, to stem this issue, in the ball, I think it's actually um, a welcome development. Indeed, I couldn't mm. agree more with you, Justin. Mm. And I'm aware we now have Jide Johnson uh, joining us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, thanks Good. for being here. Okay, so we've been talking about the top stories in the Punch newspaper. Um, I don't know if you caught any of it, but the big one here says Ninja Zamfara hold talks. Uh, troops locate students and workers in forests. As the commissioner of police is saying, they have finally located where the students are. You know, after they were kidnapped from that uh, government science college in Kagara. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Mr. Didi Johnson? This is what you get when you reward criminality. This is what you get when you reward criminality and then you see a consistent pattern. A consistent pattern is students being abducted in Casina and then later being found and government negotiating with repentant bandits. We've seen that pattern too. And when the former governor of Zamfara State, prior to the election, negotiated with repentant bandits and they exchanged the AK-47 for government funds and government is given budgets, approved budgets. That's criminality. So in a society wherever you reward criminality, you are telling others that it pays to be a criminal. Now, those that kidnap these workers and students, dump them in the forest. For the police to locate them and the troops to locate them, so that because they have had their payday and nothing will stop them from doing this again. Have you seen any bandit being prosecuted? Just one being prosecuted since all this nonsense started. And if, if someone should say that, well, Nigeria is a failed nation, you see a lot of defenders of the government 
coming out to to crucify the person, to label the person, and to call the person also sub names. What I tell people is that when you see statement, making statement, just ignore the messenger, go to the message. If you go to what Father Cook has said and you read all of his speech, you see that we are sitting on the keg of gunpowder and there are attendant problems that we are playing leave service to and we are playing the ostrich. God will surely help, um, help Nigeria because the police commissioner of Niger State will have resigned. The SSS director of Niger State will have resigned. Um, whatever military formation is in Niger State will have resigned. Because how do you move large number of people without the security agencies and the intelligent officers? All right, Doctor. Um, getting, yeah, if I have to butt in here, getting, are you, what, are you, what are you saying in essence? Is it that uh, the security um, operatives in those states affected Niger and Zamfara? It's like they they are bereft of what to do, or they are just not really. Uh, doing enough, you know, or they don't have the willpower or the body language to do what is needed to tackle these issues head on? The, the security apparatus in, 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 in Nigeria, you see, the key element for security is intelligence. It's intelligence gathering and preventing something of that nature to happen. So what's the state of the, the presence of um, security personnel does not show security. You don't see a military man standing behind the president of the United States of America, like you see in our own climb, where a police officer will stand behind the president, will be behind the governor, and the colonel or brigadier will stand behind the president. You don't see all of those around. You don't see that kind of, but the security around the president of the United States of America is unseen. It's about intelligence. It's about preparing, it's about preventing such. And we have seen a pattern. When something becomes a pattern, it is no longer an excuse. And it has been a pattern the way which these bandits operate. Okay. And we have not been able to deal with this. Mr. Judy Johnson, because sad. of time, let's quickly um, run, to, run through two other headlines on the punch and then other newspapers. Uh, this one says, you know, we've been talking about Nigeria exiting from recession, the big news here for the country. And on the punch, it says, experts rate economy as weak despite exits from recession? Well, you can talk about the um, economic indices. You can talk about uh, economic growth, looking at the G GDP in terms of um, uh, what the country is making as a whole. The question you ask is, what is the standard of living? The standard of living of an average Nigerian, if we exit um, um, if there's an economic growth and we are out of recession, are uh, Nigerians, an average Nigerian, are they out of depression? Are they out of economic hardship? Are they living or they are surviving? Those are basic questions that we need to, 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 ask. to, to, to okay. look at. So we can celebrate we are existing recession. But what is the standard of living in Nigeria? Are Nigeria going through economic hardship? Are they going through um, depression? What is um, the average income per head? Um, so this, if you look at that, forget about all the uh, uh, macroeconomic indices. Let's look at the microeconomic indices. When you look at the microeconomic indices, then you know that um, we are just celebrating on the pages of newspaper and on, 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 on economic um, indices that we are moving out, out, right. out of recession. Let's wait for the second quarter. By the time all the, um, and why we are talking about that is that, you know, this is about the first time in the last in one year or there about that we have had um, people going back to work. Prior to that, we were all at home as a result of the lockdown. So it's not yet to rule. It's not yet time for celebration. It's good we are out of recession from economic point of view, but from a standard of living point of view, I think government needs to still do more. 
All right, uh, Dr. Jidea, let's uh, move on to the next paper. Now we'll be explaining the, the Daily Independent also. Uh, making a banner headlines this morning, uh, military action alone can't defeat uh, Boko Haram. That's uh, Buratai uh, saying that. Above the masthead, uh, court uh, blocks 20 SBDC bank accounts over alleged oil theft. Also on the Independent this morning, a suspected herdsman killed seven farmers uh, in Edo State with the rider uh, state not ceding any land to herders, says government. All right, a fresh tension in Olu over IPOB ESN military uh, possible clash. That's on the Daily Independent uh, this morning. Uh, we also see a picture there, uh, just at the middle of the page. Uh, above the picture, neck or case compensation for victims of herder farmer conflict. That's on page 29 on the Daily Independent. As Nigeria inching out of recession, as GDP grows by 0.11% in fourth quarter of 20. 20. Some other headlines this morning on the Daily Independent. Some governors blame politics with people's uh, lives. That's Governor Bello saying that uh, reveals how he chased ISIS, Boko Haram, out of uh, Kogi State. Then again, in security, guard your air transit, Abdul Salami Abubakar warns uh, governors as NAFDAQ approves AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine for use in Nigeria. Now, Dr. G.D. Johnson, let's look at one uh, headline that was actually making so much noise uh, yesterday. That's from the southeastern part of Nigeria. Fresh tension in Olu over IPOB, ESN, military possible clash. Let's get your reactions. Well, um, this is very sensitive, sensitive in the sense that we see the military being quick to um, the right of self-determination, the right of self-expression, it's, it, it, it's, it's a right that is respected by the United Nations. Every individual, every nation, every um, section of the country has the right to self-determination, to see that well, as far as we are concerned in this union, uh, Interest and not being served to own happiness and our own good. In, in, a, in a civilized manner, without carrying harms and the rest and the rest of it. But we see the way the military are quick to move to suppress any form of agitation. But we see the way the military are reluctant in dealing with bandits that threaten the territorial integrity of Nigeria coming outside of Nigeria, particularly if you look at the northern borderline of, of Nigeria, from Shukutu to Bono, our people, our bandits come in ceaselessly into Nigeria, moving with guns, and then you begin to wonder, where are the military and where are our security, security agencies? My advice to government is to you see, when there is an agitation for self-determination, you don't quell that with force. Force does not solve problems. You can quell it with force in the in the short run. But in the long run, when there is a determination from the people that they want to pursue their own happiness, that they are dissatisfied with the particular union, it's just a matter of time they will get they will get they will get their desire and they will get their their their, their wishes because um, otherwise. Government will succeed in hardening those that um, are growing up now. That okay. And they get to a certain point, you see, enough is enough. Because I don't know why the military will be brought in to address a civil issue. Right. Civil issue can be addressed through civil means. And what are the civil means? You have your police, you have your uh, state security agencies to address this particular this particular age. Mr. Jide Johnson, and that's, um, because of time, let's quickly turn to the next newspaper. Let's look at The Guardian this morning. Uh, the stories are the same across you know, the papers. Nigeria exits recession amid a very weak growth. Uh, we've seen this one on uh, experts fought NAVDAQ on emergency approval for Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. 
Your visa policy for foreign herdsmen destroy Nigeria, Khan tells Buhari. Why Buhari must sack defense minister now by PDP? Military, ESN clash persists in Imo, and security concerns hit feverish points. Uh, like I said, the stories are, are similar. But let's talk about this one, uh, NAVDAC, approving the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and experts forcing NAVDAC's emergency approval uh, for this. Mr. J.J. Johnson. Well, um, well by, by, by the extant law and statutes of Nigeria, no drug can come into Nigeria without the approval of, um, of NAVDAC, uh, even though we don't know whether they have the resource to, to test the efficacy of um, this, um, this particular vaccine, but by extant law, any drug coming into Nigeria, even the approval is about paperwork. Uh, you must do the paperwork. So it's, NAVDAC is doing its its, its basic um, constitutional uh, function in this in this particular in this particular regard. And, and I think that uh, what everybody is looking forward to, if it's been approved in the United Kingdom, where you believe that there will be due process before this um, vaccine was um, was allowed for public usage. I think NAVDAC has done something, something, something right because everybody's clamoring for this vaccine. There are some wealthy Nigerians have left Nigeria to go to Dubai to take this vaccine. This vaccine should be made available for every Nigerian. I think where as far should be talking is government taking steps to ensure that this vaccine is made available, like the yellow fever vaccine, like the polio vaccine, is made for, available for everyone that wants to have the shot of of this particular um, person, and that's what the experts should be concerned about. How do we get it to every Nigerian at no cost? Okay. Because when you are dealing with a pandemic, it's the society which is represented by the government that takes care of the of our people, and that should be the concern of of expert, not what they are talking about. Are they looking for consulting job? Probably they wanted. Um, now that to use them as a consultant to come and get this up for it. As far as I'm concerned, now that is operating within the act of the law that established it. All right, let's move on next to the Nation newspaper making a banner headline. Uh, insurgency may persist uh, for 20 years, uh, but hey, once above the mast. Uh, next same uh, targets 1.2 trillion naira balance sheet in 2022. Uh, C-Link project to be done. Relief coming for victims of herders, farmers, conflict. Uh, that's above the masthead of the nation newspapers. Market shot in Lagos to honor Jack and Day. Also on the nation this morning, uh, it spreads across board uh, various uh, newspapers uh, today. Uh, Q4 GDP growth takes economy out of recession. Expert, uh, NSAS impact, okay, NSAS impact exaggerated, uh, APC excited. Uh, forest reserves have become bandit's haven, says Oloni Shaki. All right, uh, Mr. J.D. Johnson, let's talk about one of the issues here again. You know, uh, we mentioned it uh, when we uh, started the show this morning, but let's just get your thoughts uh, concerning that. Uh, Berthe is in the news. He says insurgency may persist for 20 years. How does that hit you? If you yeah, don't have that statement that the law of the National Assembly doing its screening, I think it does not deserve to be screened. It means that it's, it failed them. Someone that has been the chief of our staff for close to a seven years, and then he's coming out with such statement, and then you could see the chief of defense staff also saying that the forest reserve has become the apple. It shows failure of leadership on their part. It's an admittance of guilt, and it's what is called food and sleep. They tell us that they are helpless when they were given the responsibility of protecting the territorial integrity of Nigeria based on all the resources that we made available for. For, for them to, 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 to do that. It's, it's an indictment of, of, of their stewardship as the top military brass in, 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 in Nigeria. And it's coming to reality. When people that you are charged with responsibility are briefed over here, and people have asked questions, why is the president rewarding them with the ambassadorial appointment when he's saying that it will take 20 years? 20 years. How many years did it take Donald Trump to deal with? You might not like his personality. But you can't fault his policy. How many years did it take him 
to decimate ISIS. How many? How many years does it take him to resolve the issue of America in Afghanistan? How? That presidents, more than three presidents, have not been able to... When there is the will, you see, look, the reality of war is that there are beneficiaries of war and there are victims of war. The beneficiaries of war are the insurgents that are the terrorists and insurgents that are fighting the war and the top military brands that are making money from the nation's resources. They make money and military contractors. The victims are people. They are the people that suffer from it because whether you like it or not, some people make money, make money from war. That's the reality. And I've told, every time we talk about this issue, I ask people to go and watch this movie, The Lord of War. If you watch this movie, and movies are portrayal and reflection of reality, if you watch the movie, Lord of Wars, then you will see the, the intrigues and the power play, the bureaucracy, how they benefit from war. So you can hear that from both the chief of defense staff and uh, the chief of army staff. All retired. Right. And they are telling us that it will last for 20, 20 years to deal with banditry and 20 years to deal with insurgency. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Then you should allow every Nigerian to carry on. Mm -hmm. We had what um, the chief of the present minister of defense said when he was talking to people in the north. I, I saw the clips where he said that uh, citizens should defend themselves. Probably government should allow us to carry on and we defend us because it has getting to that level. Mr. Jide Johnson, uh, let's quickly wrap up with this story here. It says markets shut in Lagos to honor Latif Chakonde. So all markets in Lagos would be closed today. The Alaja General of Nigeria, Mrs. Folashade Tinubuju, you know, announced this yesterday that markets will be closed, uh, you know, to mark the, in a mark of respect and honor, you know, for the departed late governor. Let's uh, talk about that briefly uh, before we wrap up the segment. Yeah, well, um, it's, um, I like to keep Jack on the deserves even much more than that. Um, deserves much more than that. A lot of markets that you have in Lagos were opened by him, just like schools, just like roads, just like estates, just like communities were opened uh, uh, by him. If, in fact, uh, I thought that the government, as as a whole, probably could have done a candle procession for him in in Alausa as well. Whatever is done to honor this great man, it's, it's there. You see, one of the ways you make science of public administration is to do a comparative analysis, um, comparative analysis of um, true administration. But if you do a comparative analysis of Jack on this administration, and you compare it with Tinumbu, Fashola, Ambody, and so on, look on by the four of them. Four year, eight years of Tinumbu cannot even match one year of Jack on his administration. So if you put the four of them together, what they achieved, what they have achieved, or what they are achieving, let me put it, what they are achieving, and what Baba Jack on they achieved, it, it's, it's incomparable. It's absolutely incomparable. In fact, you shouldn't mention them at all. Um, because if Baba Jack on they had, uh, has had the opportunities they have, and the resources they have, and the time they have, I'm sure Lagos will have turned to Dubai. And whatever is done for Vajak on I have an opportunity of sitting with him on more than three occasions, sitting with him and trying to download his mindset with my with my with form, with my boss, the former editor of, of the Punch and the former provost of Nigerian of Journalism. So I sat on more three, than three occasions that we went to Baba's Adam said, I will download that. You need to see the intelligence and you begin to wonder why did these people that I made mention of not tap on this man's resources? that was able to transform Lagos within four years, within open up rural Lagos and connect the rural and urban Lagos together. Lekki, Lekki wrote that they are told him. He was the one that opened it and built that estate in Lekki. You have a estate in Lekki, you have in Yanoso, you have in Ikorotu, you have in Abeso, you have all those areas were remote areas. And you ask these ones, what have they done? Now he opened schools, he opened he established general hospitals, all these things were accessible by the poor. The estate this one are building, the estates, this one are building, this present one I'm talking about, the estate they are building. Can an average person bought it? Those estates were bought by teachers, they were bought by artisans, 
If you don't steal money, you can't buy the estate. This ones are built. All right. So, so Mabaja Kondi, that's all the, all the respect, all the accolades. Indeed. And forever and ever, we will continually be celebrating him. Let those that are empowered know today that tomorrow they will die. And people will say something. All those who are worshipping them today, when they die, history will place them in the rightful place. Right. They belong. Let them steal all the money they want to steal. Mr. But Mabaja Kondi lived a simple, powerful life. And it's evident. If you thank go to you school, so school, much, school, thank school, you so school, much. Indeed, there there's no security. There's no security. There's only one of God. Of honor. Can this one live without security? Thank you so much, Mr. Jude John. is speaking passionately about the uh, uh, later yes. former governor of Lagos State. Everyone we've spoken to had mm. great words to, you know, to say about uh, Latif Jacqueline. Yeah, we, we send condolences to his family and pray that his soul rests in peace. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. Thanks again, Mr. Jude Johnson, for coming on the breakfast this morning. It's always a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm just seeing you again. <laughs> nice to see you again. Right, have a great day. Thank you so much. Yes, we'll take a break now and return to discuss events that shape the world today in history.